Welcome back to my Mega Wang 2000 Turbo Edition hardware update. On the left is the new version of the Super Scaled Sprites board, and on the right is the slightly older board which had a few little bugs in it. I've already populated the RAMs, but the new board has some extra dip switches to configure the internal memory and also an extra dip switch for the clock divider so that I can divide down the internal clock that this board runs at. The new board will also use by default the video generation clock which is at 12.096 megahertz. Here is the new super scaled sprites board in situ. Behind the frontmost board which is the APU board which has that great big daughter board on it. That is the emulated output from my emulation framework. I'm just running the program file now on the Commodore 64. That's the Commodore 64 output. The Commodore 64 then DMAs all of the graphics and sound data to the board and wow, look at that. So PCBWay have delivered yet another working board for my new super scaled sprites board. And this also works. So the previous version of the super scaled sprites board had a few bugs. Uh, it was generating a few random pixels and also it was truncating the right hand edge of all of the scaled sprites, which I could correct in software, but it wasn't really matching the simulation properly. So I bug fixed the hardware and this new revision seems to be working perfectly because there's no software bug fix in this version. Uh, this version of the Afterburner demo, which is running on my Commodore 64 and outputting to this uh, display here, uh, is actually using some frame rate compensation as well. So I'm using an unmaskable interrupt on the Commodore 64 to count the frames that the external video hardware is generating. And then because the Commodore 64 can take one, two, three, or sometimes even four frames at 60 frames a second to calculate the data before it sends it to the graphics hardware, uh, I need to have the Commodore 64 run its internal game loop steps to compensate for variations in frame rate calculation speed. So that's what that NMI interrupt does. I can fire missiles by pressing space on the Commodore 64 keyboard. I can also speed up and slow down. Everything seems to be working with this board. It's fantastic. Uh, so this is currently running at the video generation board's internal clock rate of 12.096 megahertz. And everything seems uh, more stable and it's not truncating the right hand edge of the pixels like the previous board was doing as well. So uh, successful. And I'm really happy with this build so far. What we can do now though is that we can try overclocking the board to see how well it will behave when we increase the clock rate above the standard video generation board of 12.096 megahertz. So underneath the display now I've connected up this uh, very nice little cheap and cheerful box for, the, for a signal generator. It's currently generating a square waveform, normal clock style waveform. 50% on, 50% off, so standard duty cycle. And it's running at 12.1 megahertz. It's outputting 12.1 megahertz there, so it's slightly faster. So let's tell this to start. I've reset the Commodore 64, but the video hardware is still outputting sprites to its frame buffers you see so as I down clock this now to 5 megahertz you can see it's rendering about half and a quarter and maybe a third uh, or maybe even an eighth of that grid of balls there so the Commodore 64 is doing nothing it's reset it, the video hardware is just rendering the scaled sprites from the last good data that the Commodore 64 has sent to video hardware and it's constantly redrawing, so it's it's pulling the sprite data from its internal sprite register RAM, and then it's just drawing those scaled sprites. So as I down clock and up clock this, so now it's at twelve point three 
megahertz. You can see it the nanosecond length there as well on the display for this signal generator. As I clock it up, now it's 12.6 megahertz, 12.7 megahertz, I can start seeing some stray pixels look. Appear in the afterburner logo, that's pixel fetch issues probably from the internal uh, sprite RAM data. So because the fetches from the internal sprite RAM data have to occur for each pixel uh, because they're scale sprites, uh, you can either scale up or scale down or have a neutral scale, right? But you still have to fetch the pixel data from the RAM. And so the, the RAM timings will, as I clock this up further and further and further or increase the clock rate, uh, we'll get more and more stray pixels. Let's reset the Commodore 64 and see what we get when we have the test card. So this is like a test card or a, a boot up test screen. So I'm pressing fire to advance past that. And now the Commodore 64 is sending the new data. So at this slightly different clock, improved clock rate now, uh, the game still seems to mostly run. Right, it's not not doing too badly. I'm just going to advance to a point in the game where I know that I've got a, a sprite overdraw issue, where basically in the top left-hand corner of the screen, that little yellow ball will disappear. There we go. I've reset the Commodore 64. So uh, there's so many scaled sprites, or rather, the scaled sprites are so large that it runs out of draw time. So if I increase the clock rate, you can see it starts to render that tree off in the distance. And if I decrease the clock rate, then it's drawing fewer leaves on the trees further off into the distance. If I change the clock rate so it's a lot slower now, so it's like half or a quarter of what it should be, then it removes a lot of the trees. And then if I overclock it, you can start seeing these uh, errant vertical lines appear in the output and that's where it's having issues fetching the sprite pixel data from the internal sprite RAMs. So the idea here is that I can use the signal generator to finally control the pixel rate or the fill rate rather of the sprite board. So I can find um, empirically testing it, I can find the hardware limits of what this board will run at and still produce a good output. Basically, I'm, I'm tuning the, the pixel clock frequency so that the board still generates a stable output picture. And the best way of doing that is to, to have a display like this where uh, the internal where the whole display is basically being filled with, with as many pixels as possible and some of the pixels are off screen as well so 12.5 megahertz seems to be the upper stable limit of a 50% uh, duty cycle uh, clock signal which is you know not too bad I could probably get a, a 15 megahertz uh, clock oscillator or, or probably a 30 megahertz clock oscillator and then divide it by two using the dip switch for uh, dividing the clock signal by two to get uh, what was it 12.5 right oh sorry 25 megahertz right <laughs> yeah 25 divided by two is 12.5 so there we go I'm looking at the um, calculation under flow or under run rather so when there's a lot of overdraw going on when there's a lot of scaled sprite pixels being drawn it's the total number of pixels which are output to the frame buffer basically which is the limit um, that last sprite up in the top left hand corner will fail to draw because it runs out of time to render all of the scaled sprites so with this slightly higher clock speed i can uh, play through the game and it will drop out sprites a little less often than it was before.
for example, because it's got, what is it? Uh, let's see, 12.5 megahertz compared to 12.096. It's probably about 3.3%. Uh, it doesn't sound like a lot, but 3.3% is 3.3% of the entire number of pixels uh, inside the frame buffer. So uh, that's probably around about almost an extra 64 by 64 pixel sprite being able to be displayed on the screen, uh, which is quite a lot of pixels if you think about it at 60 frames a second. So yeah, I'm really happy with this new uh, board build from PCBWay. Thank you very much PCBWay for uh, delivering yet another working board. I'm always really happy to see uh, the build quality from PCBWay is always excellent. So thank you very much for watching these crazy electronics videos. If you like this kind of stuff then please do consider liking or subscribing to my channel and I hope to catch you around next time. I'm going to go off now and experiment more with uh, clock rates and also clock waveforms to see if I can fine-tune this board even more.